Hey there, Delvers. Welcome back to the Vaults Remastered. Today, we're continuing with episode three, talking about a homebrewed ancestry for my Pathfinder second edition game known as the Ignorook. In today's episode, the number of the beast, we're going to be getting into heritages, six of them specifically, along with six feats that go along with these heritages and six traditions that each of these heritages uh represents or follows or believes in lots of different uh concepts lots of different ideas here that hopefully you'll enjoy and if you do of course like the video subscribe to the channel notify yourself when the next one's coming out let's get down to business so in the first episode of this uh series about uh, igrook i was talking about going through the process of creating your ancestry itself or in dnd terms this would be your race uh, and I went through nine steps, and a lot of the emphasis was on lore and actionable, usable, you know, meaty type of information that this thing you're creating for your game world brings to your story. Uh, so if you're going to go ahead and bother with creating something that's brand new, you might as well give it some some meat and bones to it. So I went through the process of really building this Ignorook lore specific to my game world, but you certainly can create your own for your own game world. Then I went into second video, the mechanics, you know, the stats, the numbers, the things that you're rolling dice all about, you know, hit points and movement speeds and special abilities and all those little traits that the uh, ancestry may have. Mechanics, mechanics, mechanics. And I talked about uh, the origin of some of the ideas I had from older versions of D&D. &D. Uh, specifically the Orog and the uh, the Tanaruk, which were, I think, a third edition D&D um, creation, maybe second edition. And I used those a lot of inspiration to come up with this Ignorook concept. Of course, wove in my own lore for my own game world. And that leads us to today's episode, episode three, which is this idea about heritages and heritage feats. Now, in Pathfinder terms, the heritages would be your sub-races that you would have in Dungeons & Dragons or other various uh, RPGs that you're playing out there. But from the Player Core, page 41, the remastered rules, here's what it talks about for heritages. So, at you know, when you're creating your character and you choose your ancestry, Ignorook in my case, uh, you then select a heritage as well. And the heritages uh, isn't necessarily blood related it could be a cultural type of heritage uh so it's something that's not necessarily dna based but anyway so it's abilities passed down from your ancestors or they're common among those of your ancestry in the environment where you were born or grew up uh, you have only one heritage you can't change it later heritage is not the same as culture or ethnicity although some of the cultures ethnicities might have more or less as far as particular heritages go uh, I disagree a little bit in that because I do like to bring in, and that's where my tradition concept is going to come in. The heritages have a tradition, which is a cultural infusion. So I disagree a little bit there with that last kind of sentiment, but we'll get to that in a minute. And then the other thing you're going to get is a feat that goes with your ancestry. And I have a whole bunch of feats I'm going to create for this Ignorook, of course, because that's probably the biggest challenge when you're going to go ahead and homebrew an ancestry for your Pathfinder game, or if you're creating a race for your D&D game. You have to come up with those abilities, uh, so not just sort of the mechanics, but what are the special little things, and it's more so in, in Pathfinder because feats are such an important critical part of character um, creation and development over their 1 to 20 career, and you get ancestry feats, I think it's every four levels after first. Yeah, 5th, 9th, 13th, and 17th. Uh, but what I'm going to talk about specifically today are heritage feats. And what those are, they're just ancestry feats that you can pick or not pick if you wish. But they have a prerequisite of your specific heritage. And so they're going to allow you to really become that uber, you know, heritage, whatever it is you, you choose. So if you want, you can go hardcore at your heritage at each of those levels there. I have a set of feats that I'm going to create. Uh, today, I'm only going to share the first level ones, though. So anyway, feats of these extra powers, they give you little extra abilities, and they, they provide that flavor for your character that is ancestry-based. All right, so that's sort of the background that we're talking about. Let's get into what it is I've come up with, how I go about doing it, what's my design, what are my ideas. And if you think any of these things are pretty cool or whatever, let me know in the comments. If you have a disagreement about something, you can comment. Uh, whatever it is you're thinking, go ahead and express it down in the little comment box there. 
All right, so here it is, Heritages of the Ignoruk. What was I set out or setting out to do here? Uh, so although my Ignoruk in my game, they have this big, long history of uh, being on the surface uh, in my game world is known as Ericor, and they were just plain old orcs of the Death Maw tribe. But they spent centuries in hell and culminating in this arduous climb up through this pit, this vertical shaft that connects between the world of hell, uh, the surface known as Avernus, up to the game world, which is the vaults where my player characters are currently existing. And the vaults are a dark lands, uh, under dark subterranean realm that's beneath the surface of Ericor. So these, these orcs, these Death Maw orcs, they were fell down into hell through treachery by the by their once allies, these gray dwarves known as the Droog. Uh, and in sort of an act of defiance survival, they managed to somehow make it through this this centuries of you know being attacked and savaged on the volcanic surface of Avernus. And they emerge up through this crater known as the Eye within the game world. The, the Great Grotto is this uh, cavern. Uh, and this was a crucible for them, and it leads to these various adaptations in their form, which are the heritages. So, at first level, you're going to choose a heritage that's based upon the concept of this lore, this ancestry, this exposure to Avernus, to Hell, this climb, the savagery. And each heritage is going to provide your player character, your, your ignorant, with a unique ability... Uh, a heritage feat, which I already mentioned, and this tradition that I'm creating for you know from scratch, which is not a standard Pathfinder Second Edition thing, but I have my disagreement a little bit with the way Pathfinder does uh, these heritages because I they put a little flavor in there and they give a little bit of ability, but it's not really expressed or fleshed out. And again, my opinion is if you're going to go ahead and create a homebrew, you might as well create a homebrew and not just make a little a little fluff piece, right? You got to put some meat on those bones. So I have a tradition as well uh, that's a testament to the Ignoruk's indomitable will and serves as a means to harness this inner fire. So it's a flavor thing, not really a mechanical thing. All right, let's get into this. So the first one is the Avernian Ignoruk. Now this guy doesn't really look very orcish at all, and that's on purpose because... The Avernian has been infused by infernal blood that is just bubbling and boiling beneath their blackened skin. They have diabolic power. Perhaps they were bred with some of these devils, uh, these fiends. Perhaps they were infected somehow. Whatever it is, they've been manifesting this power now. And they've been trying to keep it hidden. Forked tails, you know, clawed hands, you know, horns growing out of their head. But they've obviously failed. The, this diabolic power is, you know, more and more greater as they perhaps age or whatever. And this has kind of forced them to live on the fringes of their society, uh, their tribe. They've been exiled altogether because they don't look very orcish. Uh, so this kind of gives you that, that, you know, that black sheep of the family type of concept. But it also gives them strength. So if you choose the Avernian heritage as your Ignoruk, you're going to become trained in athletics right from you know the get-go you also get one common first level skill feat that has a prerequisite of trained in athletics as it reflects the manifestation of your avernian or your this infernal blood and i'll show you an example or the options you have give me one second as i pull this up all right so here we go the list that you could choose from so you get training in athletics if you pick avernian and you also get access to one of these first level feats that requires trained in athletics. Uh, if you're not familiar with Pathfinder or you're you know, just getting started, uh, you have lots of feats that you choose at various levels, class feats, skill feats, ancestry feats, like I've already mentioned. Uh, so one of the categories, these skill feats, they are based upon your skills. So you have athletics, arcana, crafting, you know, all the different skills that Pathfinder has. So the other advantage of being an Avernian is you get to choose one of these first level athletics feats right off the, you know, right out of the starting gate here. And they are representative of your Avernian fiendish diabolical, you know, shape shifted form. Uh, so maybe you got those claws that allows you to climb better. Uh, maybe you got like, uh, like, you know, a tail, that fork tail lets you swim better. So that's where the underwater marauders. So anyway, these are some of the examples of things you could take. And it's flexible enough that allows you to kind of explain how your, 
you know, physical deformity or whatever it might be seen by, you know, your own kind manifesting as these diabolical traits gives you these, these various skill feats. So that's the idea there with, oops, let me, uh, with having the training in athletics. I pull that back up. There we go. All right. So that is the Avernian. Now it's not just you pick this and that's all you get. Uh, the other thing I have is for each of my, my, and again, this is my own philosophy, Pathfinder doesn't necessarily follow this specifically, but they also often have, if you look at the ancestry feats, they have feats that are prerequisites, specific heritages, or a lot of times it would be a skill or some other feat, like you have to build uh, you know, sort of like a foundation for your, your level up. So just be aware of that if you are a, a newbie to Pathfinder. A lot of feats have prerequisites of perhaps other feats, skills, or in this case, the specific heritage. So if you pick the Avernian, you're going to have a set of feats that goes and can level up with you that I'm purposely creating as the stackable, uh, you know, amplifiable uh, set of abilities. You don't need to take these. They're not mandatory. They're not automatic. You, they're just an option. So I've created a set of heritage feats. So here's the first level one for the Avernian, and that is Infernal Strength. So at first level, you get this ability, and it has the fortune effect or the fortune trait, and that would translate into D&D 5e terms as advantage, disadvantage. So fortune, advantage, uh, misfortune is disadvantage. So it allows you to re-roll a D20 die. By the way, again, if you're new to Pathfinder, there's not all kinds of re-rolling of die like there is in D&D. Uh, it's very rare that you actually get a chance to re-roll a die. Typically, you got to spend a hero point to do it. But anyway, there is a fortune effect here. So here's what the Avernian Heritage feat, Infernal Strength. At first level, you could choose this as your Ancestry feat instead of the other Ancestry feats, which I've not yet talked about. And I won't in this video. That'll be our next video on the Ignorook. Uh, but this first level feat, Infernal Strength, you have to be an Avernian. And it just says your infernally tainted blood grants you incredible strength that allows you to push your body to its limits. So you are just like, you know, a specimen of physicality. Uh, and what that translates into, mechanically speaking, so if you choose this feat, you get a plus one status bonus on your athletics checks if you're trying to climb, jump, or swim. So one of those movement uh, you know, subtypes, you get a plus one bonus. Because if you need to climb a wall, you got to roll a d20 and make an athletics check to do it. Maybe the DC's a 15, a 20, whatever. This would add a plus one status bonus to that. Same thing with jumping, same thing with swimming, etc. Uh, then the, the kind of third part of this is that additionally, once per day, this is where the fortune effect uh, clicks in, you can choose to re-roll an athletics check. So you roll your d20, you might not like the number that you get. You don't know the answer yet. So before you know the result, before your GM says anything, you can opt to re-roll, use your fortune, uh, and take another chance at it. If your die roll is worse, too bad. You got to take the second roll. So it gives you that sort of push your luck um, you know, flavor to it. So that is the Avernian Heritage feat and Fertile Strength. So it ties back into their athleticism that ties back into their lore as these survivors, these, you know, those hulkish, uh, you know, creatures with horns, perhaps, and that sort of thing. Then the tradition, this is something new that I'm adding to my game uh, to help, you know, flesh out these heritages. So not only do you have, I'm an ignorant with all this lore and all this history, and I've got all these mechanics that goes with it. I've chosen the Avernian feat because I am some sort of diabolical, you know, devil-blooded, uh, ignorant orc. Well, there's something more to it. There's some, there's some more lore. There's some more story. There's some more culture behind that that really helps you as a player character flesh out this, 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 this person you're creating. And that's this tradition. So I have this infernal conclave. Now, this isn't going to add anything mechanical to the game. This is simply some fluff it's simply some some you know more meat it's some more lore it's some more story and what it says is once a year those of this avernian heritage gather for the infernal conclave a secret meeting where they share knowledge gleaned from their fiendish ancestry so this kind of gives the idea that these diabolical entities that have somehow infused with them gotten their blood into them uh maybe they're whispering to them somehow or they're doing some sort of you know 
uh, contact with them through, you know, whatever rituals and conclaves. Who knows? They're getting information. And they discuss, you know, these omens, the visions granted by their diabolical blood, and it strengthens their overall tribe strategy and defenses. So maybe they are outsiders in the tribe, but perhaps secretly, you know, you're, you're the chief or the shamans, they go to these people because they have knowledge of, you know, these forbidden infernal rites or whatever. So that is the tradition that I've come up with, come up with here for your Avernians. So you get your basic heritage, the Avernian, which gives you a ability. You then have access to a prerequisited Avernian heritage feat that you can choose or not. And then you have this tradition that gives you some lore, gives you some cultural influence on your character that's specific to your, your subrace, specific to this heritage. All right, that's the first one. I got five more to go. So hopefully you're digging this. And if you are, like and subscribe and all that cool stuff. But let's go. Let's pick up the pace here. We've got the Crag Ignorook. Uh, for the Crag, your calloused hands and scarred body speak to a life spent as a scout, where you led the climb from ledge to ledge, scorching foot by scorching foot, dragging yourself up and over razor-sharp edges with only a hand's grip between you and death. Despite your keen senses and careful tread, most of your kind never made it to see the glory of the eye. So the eye was that last, you know, ledge that you pulled yourself up uh, like this, you know, volcanic, you know, dome opening, this crater that you crawl out of beneath you was this pit, this fire node that led all the way down to hell itself. And you were the scouts, you were the leaders that were, you know, blazing the trail up through this, this climb. So, hey, what do you get if you choose this heritage? You gain resistance to falling damage. Uh, right, because you have to have that experience. Maybe learn some little parkour moves or something like that. So you can reduce falling damage uh, by half your level, minimum of one. You also gain your choice of the train expertise or the combat climber skill feats. So again, we've got skill feats and terrain expertise, underground terrain and combat climber. Even if you don't meet the prerequisites for that, which I think might be survival. Uh, so anyway, even if you don't have survival as a trained skill, you still have access to this feat. You're just not as good as someone who would be trained in survival, but you can pick it anyway. So there you go. That's your crag's basic abilities they get if you choose this heritage. Then the heritage feat that goes along with it. Lava Walker feat one. So at first level, you could choose this feat for your ancestry, but you must be a crag heritage to do so. What does it provide you? Well, the flavor text is this, your time spent navigating first Avernus, and then the pit has exposed you to extreme heat and rugged landscapes that have hardened your feet and hands, allowing you to ignore much of the pain. The specific mechanics is this, your innate resistance to fire damage. So the Igneruk have fire damage, part of their ancestry, it's uh, half their level. Uh, you increase to equal to your level. So you have double the fire resistance as a standard Igneruk out there. Furthermore, you're able to ignore any movement penalties to difficult terrain that's caused by jagged hot surfaces. So if you're going across, you know, spiky, jagged stalagmite terrain, lava, coals, you know, hot, steamy places, something like that. So that's be specific to your heritage. You're not going to suffer movement penalties. You can move across it at regular speed. Uh, this doesn't prevent you. This doesn't like allow you to walk on lava, right? I mean, you can skip across, you know, rocks and that kind of stuff but if you are denser than the surface you're walking across like bubbling volcanic mud or something you're still going to sink or magma whatever you're still going to sink you know maybe you can run quickly enough because it is a thick viscous liquid that'll be up to the gm uh but you still are able to sink so you're not like walking on water here all right so then the heritage leads to the tradition and the crag tradition is Cliff Song Rite. The Cliff Song Rite is a tradition where the Crag Ignorant, they climb to the highest reachable points in their, their home, uh, and they sing ancient songs that echo through the vaults. And this act is, is meant to honor those who have fallen, those who fell during the climb and never made it to, to, the, to the rim. They never made it up to the eye. And the idea is that you're, you're calling, you're singing, you're guiding the spirits of the fallen back to your god, Vulculus, the lord of the earth. All right, that's your crag. Then we go into heritage number three, the Fumeral Ignoruk. Your kind were exposed to noxious fumes and suffocating ash that should have killed you, but somehow you survived. 
However, you did not emerge unscathed. Your shriveled skin is forever pale, dry, and cracked. You gain resistance to poison damage equal to half your level, minimum of one. You also gain a plus one circumstance bonus to fortitude saves against poison effects. So very flavored, very specific to their heritage. So I'm not going to give, you know, lots of, you know, abilities that are very broad. Everything's very specific to their, their, you know, their ancestry, to their heritage, so that it's not overpowered, right? Then the heritage feat that goes along with the fumarole. I really like this picture, by the way. Dolly, okay, AI art generator, doing an awesome job with these Igdru, with the props I'm giving him. So, hey, what is up with the Fumeral Heritage feat? It's a reaction known as Poisonous Retaliation that you can pick at level 1. And you can use it once every 10 minutes. The trigger is you get hit by a melee attack. And if you do, you can eject a burst of poisonous gas from your body that envelops uh, that adjacent attacker. So it has to be adjacent like 5 feet. So if a creature has reach on you like 10, 15 feet, you can't hit him with this. It has to be adjacent. I might have to clarify that it's within 5 feet. But... The attacker has to make a fortitude save against your class DC. Otherwise, they become sickened one for a round. And if they critically fail against your class DC, they become sickened two. Sickened is uh, sort of like the poison condition in D&D. And the numbers sickened one and two dictate either how many rounds something lasts or dictates the value of the penalty, like a minus one or a minus two. Uh, so there you go. That's their heritage feat for the fumaroles. Then the tradition that they have for the fumaroles is ashen vigil this uh this heritage you engage in the ashen vigil it's a silent meditation that you practice in the midst of volcanic fumes that others would choke and die on uh, you cover yourself in the sacred ash of the territory which is said to cleanse your spirit so it's kind of like a smoke ritual uh, and reinforce your resistance to poisons both physical and spiritual as you're just inhaling these toxic fumes and toxic vapors and the ash is just you know would normally dry out your skin but your skin's already cracked and dried anyway all right our fourth tradition sorry our fourth heritage is the hellfire ignoruk and then with the hellfire ignoruk the story here is the endless threats of fire and fiend have sensitized you to react with extreme prejudice any who dare test your metal find themselves unprepared to weather the hellfire you rain down upon them you gain the unbridled fury which is another reaction once a day, you can use this ability, trigger your hit by a critical melee attack. You can make a reactionary strike against that foe with a plus two circumstance bonus on the to hit roll. This attack is not affected by your multiple attack penalty. And if you, if you strike with a critical of your own, your attack is going to deal bonus damage equal to half your level. So this is you get critted, you can reactionary strike and wail on somebody plus two to hit do the bonus damage equal to half your level so you can unload on them harshly the heritage feat the hellfire uh ignoruk would get is fiendish strikes it's a free action and you can channel the flames of avernus into your melee weapon or unarmed strikes leaving enemies seared and burning in your wake so this grants you a plus one status bonus to damage with melee weapon or unarmed attacks that deal fire damage. So even though it's free, so you don't have to spend any of your action economy on it, your, your weapon, melee only, your unarmed strikes, they have to be able to deal fire damage in the first place. If they don't deal fire damage, then this is useless to you. So maybe that's like, well, that sucks. Why would I ever pick this? Well, there's another little side effect that you can gain advantage from and that is special if you're wielding a weapon melee or unarmed strike that doesn't deal fire damage you can spend an action so you can use one of your action economy you got three actions on your turn in pathfinder before you make the attack roll which imbues it with hellfire the attack now deals fire damage on a hit and gains the deadly d6 you can use this ability a number of times per day equal to your charisma modifier minimum of one so instead of dealing, you know, bludgeoning damage, it now deals fire damage, and it has a deadly D6. Uh, deadly traits are triggered with critical hits. Uh, so deadly D6, if my memory serves, if you roll a crit, 
it's going to deal fire damage and it's going to do an extra d6 worth of uh, fire damage. So it's a little bonus damage on top of that. But you got to spend one of your actions to do this. You can only do this once a day, uh, a number of times equal to your charisma modifier. And the duration is just that attack. Again, I might have to clarify that information here that it's you spend an action. It's the next strike. Boom, it's done. OK, it doesn't like last for an hour or something like that. All right. So that's their heritage feat. Then we've got the Hellfire Tradition. So Trial by Flame. Hellfire Ignoruk undergo the Trial by Flame, a fierce combat exercise conducted within a ring of fire. They spar with one another, honing their reflexes and combat prowess. And the trial concludes only when the flames extinguish, symbolizing their resilience and unbreakable will. So you put a couple of these dudes in a ring of fire and they got to duke it out until the flame goes dead. Hopefully not one of them. So that's their tradition. And again, I like these traditions because they add more flavor, right? You got the Igneruk and all their story, right? But now you've got these traditions that go with their heritages that not only give, you know, you oh, I'm a hellfire and that kind of sub story. Now you got a tradition on top of that. So it really lets you layer all kinds of lore into character choices, which is something I like to do as I'm, if I'm going to homebrew, I'm going to give my players story. I'm going to give them lore. I'm going to give them stuff that really helps them design some character, come up with some cool ideas and some cool choices uh, to really come up with a great backstory to tie in. And it ties into the game world on top of that. All right, our next, uh, I think this is our fifth of our heritages, the Pit Forged Ignoruk. You descend from a line of terrifying warriors born of the fight for survival across the volcanic wastes of Avernus. Your ferocity is magnified by these massive weapons and armor that have jagged edges and barbed like hooks and stuff hanging off of them. Forged from Hadium, a living metal containing the screaming souls of the damned. You become trained in intimidation. You also gain the intimidating glare feat. And I know what you're thinking. Hey, shouldn't there be some crafting thing going in there because I can make these weapons? Yes, but not yet. Uh, so you get this intimidation skill right out of the gate and you get the intimidating glare skill feat, which pretty much lets you make intimidation. Uh, the specific is, I think it's demoralized as the action you get to take. And you can do it with just a look. You don't need to say a word. You just got to look at them. If they can see you, you can try to intimidate them, demoralize, which causes a penalty to them, I think. All right, your heritage feat for pitch for a pit forged is this pit tactics and this one i don't might be a little bit op i'm you know a little bit have to see what uh, what happens in game if anybody plays this uh but if you have a thought on it go ahead and of course leave that in the comments below but here it is at first level pit tactics your experience fighting in cramped dangerous spaces has given you an edge in battle so i imagine these pit forge guys were in the tunnels in the climb just duking it out in these narrow places you know the fiends and devils and things like that these creatures coming at them trying to kill all these all these ignoruk uh, survivors and so you've trained and developed the skills to fight in these confined spaces so here's what i came up with pit tactics you get a plus one circumstance bonus to your attack rolls and armor class when you're fighting in a space that's no wider than you are so a five foot tunnel so you are you know you have your token you have your miniature you have your space your square you occupied if you are in a a tunnel that is as wide as you are it can't be wider than that you get this bonus so only in those circumstances now, here's where it might be a little bit OP, but I'm not sure. Because that first thing, you know, that's circumstantial, right? It, it's situational. Uh, but the second one might be a little bit easier to do and might be a little bit overpowered. So it says this. In addition, when you're adjacent to a wall or other solid surface that's at least as tall as you are. So, you know, 5, 10 feet. Let's say 10 feet. Uh, you can use it to take cover. So normally take cover, you got to take an action. I'm taking cover and it grants you a bonus to armor class, I believe, uh, maybe uh, reflex saves. I forget the exact um, wording. And if you don't know the wording yourself, go back and check out my basic training video series I put out because I went through each and every single one of the basic actions that Pathfinder 2nd Edition Remastered presents to you and take cover is one of them. But long story short, it's a free action. So as long as you're standing next to something that gives you pseudo cover because of this pit forge, you know, uh, familiar, familiarity with fighting in these confined spaces, I'm saying as long as you're next to something solid that you can kind of hunker down next to, you can take cover as a free action. You don't need to spend 
one of your actions. That's why it might be a little bit OP, because as long as you're standing next to a wall, you're just like, oh, I get a bonus to my armor class automatically. Now, is that a little bit OP? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, maybe instead it still takes an action, but you get double the bonus of the take cover, because maybe you get greater cover, because there's different types of cover in Pathfinder. So maybe that's the way to, to solve the problem. I don't know. Again, uh, those of you out there that have more experience with Pathfinder than me or your own thoughts, let me know what you think in the comments about this. Is this OP or not? And then it lasts until the start of your next turn. So it's not like, you know, permanent. You have to keep doing it. But because it's a free action, you know, it's really not going to cost you anything. But it sort of locks you into you have to stand next to the surface. So that's sort of a penalty to it. You lose your mobility, I guess. Uh, all right. So anyway, that's what's going on with this one. Then the Pit Forge tradition is as follows. Soul Forge Gathering. During the Soul Forge Gathering, the Pit Forge warriors smith new Hadium weapons while reciting tales of their ancestors' valor. This ritual binds the warrior's spirit to their weapon with each strike in battle echoing the cries of their lineage. So not only do you got like the screaming souls of the damned, but now you've got, you're hammering in, you know, your own spirit, maybe like dominating and, you know, these, these, spirits these damn become your servants or something and you can kind of role play how that would work out that'd be fun okay and like i said spoiler later there's a feat that the pit forge can get that's going to allow them to have crafting bonuses and and be able to gain some sort of soul you know um, binding type of abilities spoiler all right then the final uh, heritage is the Seath Ignoruk. And this is the heritage that one of my player characters is currently running. Uh, that is Nezni. And if you've seen some of my uh, previous videos talking about the Cult of Araman, the, the Harbingers of Freedom. Uh, I did a video series about those as part of my Primordials. Also, I did a, a like a one-on-one -on -one role play session with uh, Alex, who's the player, uh, and her Seath Ignoruk Nezni. Uh, that was um, actionable role play was, I believe, the title of that video. Like, subscribe, go check out the playlist. You'll see what I'm talking about. You can search for that specific video and get some more information about Seed Ignoruk in play. But anyway, here's the story behind this heritage. Uh, you're part of a community of devout believers in the Kamlik. The Kamlik is like the religion of these Ignoruk. It's this volcanic elementalism, this uh ancestor warrior spiritualism fused together and you show your devotion to your god volculus is the main god of these ignoruk and belief in your tribe's destiny through ritual ritual scarification so they are like carving symbols and you know kind of like tattooing but you're like scarring yourself with these cuts that allows your volcanic essence to kind of bubble forth so the scarification is practice of carving ornamental patterns in your hardened flesh aimed to bring the heat of your magmatic interior to the surface despite the horrific depth to which you carve them the seething wounds only seem to toughen your flesh and increase your vitality uh, what you get out of this is you gain 12 hit points at character creation instead of the ignorant standard 10 so it's an extra 2 hp at character creation so that is cool at low levels. At higher levels, it really doesn't do much beyond that. And so I also added in the diehard feat, uh, which I think means you have to go to, uh, what is it, dying four, dying five? It's like an extra dying step before you're dead dead. Uh, so it just toughens you uh, initially and at the, the brink of death. So diehard feat. All right, then we're going to go on to the heritage feat that goes with the seeds, and that is the following. You get Scarification Mastery. So at first level, if you're one of these seed uh, heritage Igaruk, you can choose this mastery. And your ritual scarification is not only more intricate, but much more menacing than others of your kind. So you are purposely carving wicked uh, symbols into your flesh. And you gain a plus two bonus to intimidation checks against creatures that can see your horrific scars. In addition, you can channel the vitality seething just beneath your scars to tempor temporarily bolster your fortitude. Once a day is a reaction, when you gain damage, you can choose to gain temporary hit points equal to your level. These hit points do not reduce the incoming damage, but they do last for a minute to absorb subsequent damage. So it's not going to save you immediately. It's going to buff you up a little bit for the next couple rounds, perhaps. 
Um, so that's the big thing here with the seed. It's kind of just you get these 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 wounds. They're just seething and glowing, and you get your scary as hell looking, of course. And you can get hit. You can react and sort of bubble up some of your magmatic interior to give you a, an extra coating of vitality around you. Uh, the only thing I'm a little questioning is I know one of my other other guys has intimidation there so that's where i'm like hmm maybe maybe i need to change this intimidation part from one or both of these but anyway we'll leave it for now uh but that's that's their their heritage feat and then the tradition that goes along with the season i really like the the pattern on this image that uh, dolly came up with it's awesome it really ties into this ritual scarification and the intricate patterns uh these these ent these people they do uh, the tradition is this, rite of the seething heart. During this sacred ceremony, the seethe ignorant, they ritually scarify themselves before the visage of Vulculus, often near open lava flows. I think it's F-L-O-E-S, not F-L-O-W-S. Uh, these patterns are not only marks of devotion, but are believed to draw the fiery essence of their god into their markings, symbolizing their inner strength and vitality. Uh, so that is their their ritual their tradition that they do again you kind of picture this now as a character you've got your ancestry you've got your heritage you've got these feats you're picking that's all giving you lots of lots of fuel in order to create this character and you have these traditions now that give you more ideas or you can talk about this as an activity maybe this is a downtime activity you're doing now hey i'm gonna go do my right of seeding heart all right cool at the end here so hopefully you got some cool stuff out of this hopefully you're ready to embrace the heat on this idea of the igruk and these various heritages so my goals my 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 ideas here what was i shooting for i wanted to come up with unique heritages and i think i've hit the mark here uh and each heritage is offering some specific physical some you know magical traits that allow for this personalized character development that you know you can choose that reflects your style so you're not just picking ignorant this big tough thing you can kind of go spiritual you can kind of go you know tough and resilient you can kind of go fearless and brave you got these different ideas behind your heritages as you're as you're building them uh the other idea here is that you're coming up with these heritage specific feats like i said so not just a feat that any old ignorant can choose but you specifically as a member of your special heritage your little subcategory uh can choose and they're tailored to enhance your combat to enhance your survival skills that is unique to your heritage itself and it makes you just not this you know survivor with a story but you become a very formidable very flavorful uh ignorant uh, your cultural traditions was something else I shot for with these heritages. So more than just your lore, it helps you actively shape your daily life, your spiritual practices. It gives practical impact on your gameplay. It enriches the player's you know engagement, their narrative depth, all these backstory ideas they can come up with. And lastly, what I was trying to accomplish here is it allows for storytelling, of course. You know, your heritages, your traditions on top of the ancestry, on top of all the lore that's been created, it gives the player, it gives the, the game masters lots more opportunities for developing characters, coming up with adventures and quests from you know my end of things. Uh, each Ignorook is now unique. You can start to you know have a party of six Ignorook if they were each a different heritage, and they would have completely unique stories. They could have you know distinct epic quests they can go on. Lots of fuel for for just the narrative itself. All right, so that's the end of the video. Hopefully, again, some cool stuff you found here. If you like the video, you know what to do. Thumbs up. Let's notify yourself if you want to know when the next one's coming out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you can go look at the playlist. You can, you know, be alerted when the next ones are coming out. Support the channel, all that stuff. Hopefully, you got a lot out of this. In the meantime, though, go ahead and have yourselves a good weekend, good week, good night, whatever it is you're, you're doing right now. Peace out. Catch you in the next video.